What's up, everybody? It's Ronnie Haskins here today to talk to you about sales. And did you know that as long as you have a sales skill, you'll probably never need a job in your entire life? I'm living proof of it. I have Bonnie Simon joining us today. She's going to talk to us about her sales journey and where she's been going over the last year and a half. And we're going to share some of these skills with you. And then we want your comments on how your sales skills have helped you in your life, uh, especially when it comes to having a job. I mean, you basically can sell. If you can sell something, you're not required to do anything. So you, you can work anywhere at any particular company and sell any type of item as long as you have the basic sales skills. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. I hope you find it interesting. If you have comments or suggestions, please put them in the chat box. All right. So what's up, Bonnie? How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. I can see that your office uh, looks nice. I like your backdrop in your office. You're there working on your sales skills. That's right. That's exactly what I'm doing. That's what I do here every day. Every single day. I love it. I love it. I love it. So COVID-19 hit, you know, and pandemic hit. What would you like to share with us today about sales skills? And what you told me yourself is as long as you got good sales skills, you never need a job in your life. Uh, let's break it up into little segments for people. Uh, what would you like to start with? Well, I would like to start with the current situation that what we saw was that a lot of people lost their jobs. A lot of people. It was like 25 percent of the population in the country lost their jobs. And so a lot of people don't know what they're going to do now. So, of course, having having a career is basically having a set of skills that are useful for that career and then finding places to use them where you feel comfortable and happy. But sometimes what happens is that robots come along or the COVID-19 crisis comes along or um, various kinds of outsourcing come along and jobs just get swept away. But that's never going to happen with sales. And so I wanted to encourage people to think about sales as a career because you can always find a job. Right now, you can find a job. I myself just got another offer to sell another thing. There's always a way to bring in money if you know how to sell things. And it's a skill that nobody can take away from you. I love that, Bonnie. I love it. I mean, that's something that um, I think I learned haphazardly. I didn't know I was getting into something like that. But, you know, nobody dictates what my income is. Nobody tells me when to be at work. Nobody tells me things because of sales skills, right? Because we have the ability to go out and work with people and provide a solution to their exact need, which is what has made my life uh, fulfilled over the past 20 years of doing this. That's right. That And even if cars disappear tomorrow, you have a very portable skill. So you could turn around and sell the next thing that you find interesting. Yeah. So it's, it's something that well, you may never have thought of it this way, but you pretty much, you pretty much set yourself up for life this way. Airplanes would be my next uh, mission, selling yeah. airplanes. <laughs> You'd be great at it. Well, let's share. With you. But there's something else that I want. Oh, go ahead. Well, let's go. What did you have to say? What you got? Well, well, there's something else I wanted to say to people about sales, um, which is that a lot of times when I talk to people about this, what they'll say is, "Oh, I'm not salesy," or "I just don't feel comfortable with sales." But I think that they don't really understand what it is. That um, I got into it because I think it's like socializing for a living. And if you're the kind of person who likes other people, you don't have to be somebody who like wants to know everybody. But if you, if you like to have relationships with other people and you enjoy spending time with other people, this is a way, this is a skill that we're um, like a predisposition that fits very nicely into the skill. Because sales for the most part is listening and solving problems and then helping people get the, get the details organized. It's not, it's not lying. It's not, you know, any kind of like weird sales techniques. Like there's a lot of stuff that people have heard about sales that isn't really part of it and that makes them uncomfortable. But if they really knew what it was, they might actually find that it was fun. I love that too. And uh, by the way, guys, if you have, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to like the channel and subscribe to it and ring the bell so you don't miss videos when we go live or we drop a new one. So, you know, the one thing I would like to talk about is, you know, working on your sales skills. And I think the first thing I'd like to share with people, if you're working on sales skills, or if you're thinking about changing direction in your life, is these sales skills are acquired. I was an introverted person who didn't want to do sales. Like when I took the sales job in 93, I did not want to do sales. I was like, I will do anything except sales. But 
only the sales <laughs> jobs were hiring. You know, it was like, okay, I've got to go try this because nobody else is hiring. And you may have found yourself in that particular situation where nobody will hire me to do this particular job or this skill set. But these sales jobs are always hiring. And it's like, why is that? You know? Um, and so I acquired skills over 20 something years that serve me every day that help me be a better uh, server of my clients. And that has been the source of my success is continuing to add these skills. So don't forget that guys, we'll probably post that up on the screen, but these skills are all acquired. Nobody's born with them. You know, you hear that term, he's a born salesman. It's like, you know, maybe, maybe one in a million, but you know, for the most part, what I see is people who spend a lot of time, a lot of time working on their craft. And as long as they're willing to work on their craft and get better at it, um, then they can see some success. So what do you think about that? Acquiring those skills? Yeah, I think that's absolutely true that, um, that and it can even be broken down into teachable skills that you have to learn how to prospect and you have to learn how to, how to present your product and you have to learn about the product. So it's not magic in any way, shape or form. That's absolutely right. It is very much something that you can learn from from someone who can teach it. I don't know that I've ever you know classes that you can take in different aspects of sales, but it's fairly large as a discipline, and it's a good idea to find a mentor, which would actually lead me into the fact that we are always hiring, and I can do the mentoring here at Auto Search USA. Yes, you want to stick in that plug? We'll probably drop that on the screen too. We are hiring, <laughs> so if you're looking for a sales gig, we actually have one available with mentors in place. And that would be one of the most valuable things I would say, you know, we talk to any of these highly successful millionaires, uh, they even have mentors, you know? And so uh, point number two guys is find a mentor that you can follow. It may be a mentor that's in a book that you like to read on a daily basis. And that book mentors to you. It may be a physical person in an office location like we have where we are constantly mentoring our salespeople on a daily basis. So, you know, finding a mentor and shadowing that successful person, right? That person has a level of success and you're just going to shadow what they do until you get a certain level of success. And then you could even, you could even supersede or pass by your mentor. There's nothing wrong with that, but you have to have some place to start and someone to follow. And the nice thing about it is that as you are learning, you're practicing, and sometimes you make money at it. So it's not like going to school where, like I went to school to learn computer science and I was there a long time before I ever made any money. But it's not the same with sales. With sales, if you're gonna practice, you have to practice in real time on real people with a real product. And in the process, you, you make money, you sell it sometimes. So it's a very concrete kind of activity where you do get that gratification of being successful. You know, that's funny you bring that up. It's the it's the next topic. It's live action training. You know, um, when I first got into sales, we had this behind the doors training and it was about this uh, imaginary client ask you this question and what are you going to do? And so we would practice those things. And, you know, we we're all going through the cues and going through how to handle objections and how to do things. And I remember the first time I actually had a client come in the door, I could barely get through the handshake. I was like, I'm Ronnie. Happy. <laughs> How are you? Welcome to the dealership. <laughs> you know, because you have done nothing up until then. You've just gone through it in your brain on how to do it. And then the application happens when you do it over and over and over again. And that's what helps. You know, it, it hurts people and it helps them. You know, they don't want to do it because they think they're going to fail. But what we know is the more you fail, the better you get at it. And so um, the live action training with your mentor listening to them talk to customers, listening to them walk you through helping you with your client, you know, uh, definitely write that down, guys. Get your mentor involved in your sales. Make sure that they are willing to listen to you. Make a phone call. You know, like I want you to get on the phone and don't say anything, but listen to me. And then after you make the phone call, be willing and open minded to listen to that mentor and say, OK, you did this good. Here's where you need improvement. It's what you and I do all the time. Right, Bonnie? Yeah, that's absolutely right. Because, uh, you know, our offices are right next to each other. And I actually I remember very distinctly the time that I called a client and I hung up and you said through the like from office to office, she's going to be mad. 
<laughs> she wasn't mad though. <laughs> it yeah. worked out okay. But that brings me actually to something else that I wanted to say, which was that a lot of times people are afraid of sales because they're afraid of rejection. And the thing is like we all handle rejection all the time in small ways. And what I've discovered is that if you are the kind of person that gets screamed at before you become a salesperson, you probably get screamed at as a salesperson until you get better at it. But if you're the kind of person that people are generally pretty polite to, they're gonna continue to be pretty polite to you. Like I was really afraid when I started this that people were gonna be like, leave me alone, why would you be calling me? And you know, it never happened. It never happened. What happens is people do exactly the same thing that they would do when I was trying to invite them to a party or trying to get them to come and try my CrossFit gym. They just ignore me if they're not interested in it. Or they say, gosh, thanks, but I'm not really interested. And then I leave them alone. And so it's it's very natural. It isn't, it's not like you become a salesperson and like suddenly become a new person. It's still your personality and people still respond to you in much the same way. You just learn a little bit more about how to be confident and how to understand what the other person needs from you in when you're when you're working with them. Amen. I love that. And that's one thing that salespeople that are thinking about getting into sales should understand is you don't have to become somebody you don't want to be in order to be successful at sales. You can still be yourself. That's the reason why I own this business. I was in the car business. I loved the car business, but I did not like how the customer was treated. And so I created this thing. And so basically, um, you can do the same type of thing. You know, you may find that you don't like the way your company does business, but then, so you don't have to sell your soul to be good at sales. Um, you can add yeah. your personality to it. You can change, you can grow with the company, um, which is the third thing I wanted to say, and we'll finalize it with this last uh, tidbit, but rejection and getting used to rejection. Um, most of the time when people reject you, they just need more information. You know, you can't just say, hey, buy for me, I'm the best. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, that's a skill of, that you learn. You learn what to say. One out of a thousand times, somebody's going to go, "That's all I need." Where do I sign? You know, but for the most part, all these people, for you salespeople out there that have been rejected, or you're not dealing well with rejection uh, because your skin isn't thick enough, or you don't have enough experience. Just understand that that rejection is forging you and creating you. And, and what you have to realize is you have to look in the mirror. So when you get rejected, you people tend to blame the customer. They don't like the product. They don't like this. They don't like that. That's where we all, our human nature takes us there. But I challenge you to look in the mirror and go, what else could I have done for that customer to help them make a decision, not trick them into making a decision, not convince them into making a decision, but what information did I forget to share with them? Did I not share with them the enough safety features? Did I not tell them enough information about the taxes that I'm not sure enough information about, um, whatever, you know, I mean, you have to look in the mirror after each rejection and ask yourself how you can do better. You can't always be blaming it on, on the, on the people in front of you. So rejection is fine. It'll make you better. Uh, but don't forget at the end of every transaction, look in the mirror and ask yourself, what could you have done better? And sometimes guys, the answer is nothing. I did everything I could do better. It's just not working out. And I need to close this book and move on to the next one. Right, Bonnie? Yeah, absolutely. And I would add that you you look in the mirror, you do what I always refer to as the postmortem, you take the information, and then you let it go. Don't go back to thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it and trying to figure out how you could have made it better. Ruminating on it is it's not gonna help. It's just gonna take the energy away from the next sale. That's that's part of the it's just part of the game. It's just part of what we do. Just like anything else. I mean, anybody who's tried to date knows that's true. You just there's going to be rejection. There's going to be. Why do we always match up dating and selling? It's not quite the same, but they're all think dating is interesting. They're all, sales is everything. So, hey, look, thanks for it's joining me. It's in everything. Today. True. Um, thanks for joining me today. We're going to go on. And guys, we've got some car uh, reviews we're going to be doing soon. So check into the channel. We'll try and put them down as a premiere. Um, and don't forget to like the video if you like it and share your comments. We're not all right either. We're still learning as we grow and get older and we would like to give the best information to people. So if you've got other comments that you wanna add, please do. And uh, other than that, we'll see you next time. Thank you.